Today, I'm gonna to show you how to customize your YouTube page. We're talking channel art, profile picture, and everything else you need to know to make your YouTube channel look super professional. Now, if you haven't watched my prior video on posting your first YouTube video, I definitely recommend you check that out now. I'll link to it here and down below because that shows you how to create your YouTube account and some other basic information you need before you jump into what we're about to do. So let's first talk about setting up that YouTube channel. The first thing you wanna make sure you are is signed into your YouTube account. You'll know you're signed in because here at the top right of your screen, you'll see your first initial if you haven't yet uploaded a profile picture and we are going to get to that. So from the YouTube web page, you can just click on your initial here and go to your channel. And if you haven't uploaded anything to your YouTube channel yet, this is what it's going to look like. Let's first add that profile picture. That's kind of a big thing you need to do. So to do that, head on over to this little icon here with your initial and hover and you'll get this camera icon. And it's going to take you to YouTube Studio. Now, if you don't know, YouTube Studio is the back end of your YouTube channel where you can see tons of analytics once you start posting. And you can also set some channel settings, which is what we're going to do today. Now you can see here, we are on the customization menu here in YouTube Studio. And then we've got these three tabs up here and we're already selected on branding, which is where we want to start. The first thing we can do is upload that profile picture. So we're just going to hit this upload button. and you're gonna get this pop-up window here. Now, the YouTube profile, you probably already know, is like a circular image. So this blue wireframe here lets you select which part of your photo you want to use in that circle, and you can even grab one of these corners to resize it and make it tighter. I'm gonna leave the size the same, and I'm gonna reposition here around my profile image, and let's hit Done. All right, the next thing you want to add is that banner image. That is the header on anyone's YouTube channel page. This one is a lot trickier because I find that some of the templates you find for this particular image on, let's say, Canva, don't actually align with what that YouTube header is gonna look like on a desktop, tablet, or mobile device. So I am going to link to a template that you guys can download and use in in Photoshop, if you have um, Adobe Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, where you can customize that YouTube channel in the right dimension that will work both on mobile and desktop sites. It's really tricky, and I know this looks kind of goofy, right? All of the pertinent information is on the center of the screen, but believe it or not, that is how you want your YouTube header to look before you upload it here in YouTube Studio. And just a recommendation, I say you should have a little bit of imagery in there, a picture of yourself maybe, and then some information in text about what your channel is about and maybe even an upload schedule so people understand when they can expect new content from you. So once you have that set up, let's hit upload. And this is the window that you get. It shows you what is shown on every device. So the perimeter where I have that like dark blue gradient will be viewable on a TV. On the desktop page, you'll see the dark blue gradient over here as well as all of this other pertinent content. And then this window here is viewable on all devices. So you can see my content fits perfectly within the different frames of this window. It is so tricky to make the channel art. It can take a little bit of trial and error. So you might design something and then upload it here in YouTube Studio. Look at this window and see if everything fits the way you want. You might have to go back into whatever platform you're using and redesign. It's a bit of a pain, but once you get the hang of it and you save your file as like a template for yourself, it does become a lot easier even if you wanna change the information in the future. So let's hit done and you get this little preview window. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see what my header is going to look like on all of these different devices. And the next option down is to add a video watermark. Now, before I get to this next option, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a future upload. 
All right, let's talk about that watermark option. Now, a video watermark is that little icon that you see at the bottom right of people's videos on YouTube. If you're ever curious how people get that watermark, this is how it's done. Some channels opt not to utilize the watermark. Um, some people have like maybe their profile image as the watermark. And I myself have like a little subscribe icon that I use to remind people to subscribe to my content. Today, let's just use the profile image option. So what we're going to do is hit upload and we're going to go back to our profile image. And again, we get the wireframe. And instead of a circular image, like your profile images, it's actually rectangular. So let's just do that. All right, so we've got all of our branding done. Let's now head over to this tab here for basic info. And here's where you can change your channel name. So if you had a Google account and you used your name, that would be your YouTube channel name by default, but you can change it to whatever you want. I recommend picking something kind of unique so that when people are searching for your channel, they don't have a hard time finding it or they don't get you confused with anyone else. Um, if you want to find out if your channel name is unique, just go on YouTube and search whatever name you think you want your channel to be and see how many results come up. That's how you find out that's your market research. I'm just going to leave this as John Smith. That's what we're working on today. But like I said, I recommend picking something pretty unique here. All right. The next thing you want to do is add a description. The description can be found under the about tab when someone visits your YouTube channel and you really want that description to tell people what your channel is about, but you also want it to be keyword rich because that can help people find you in search when they're searching for your type of content on YouTube. So definitely take the time to fill out that description window. Once you've added your description, you can actually add another description in another language if you are more of an international channel. And then the next item is your channel URL. This is the direct link that will take people to your channel. Now, once you get 100 subscribers, you can actually create a custom URL. So it's really easy for people to find you and for you to remember. So for instance, mine is www.youtube.com slash C slash Jen Jager. So that's my custom URL, but you don't get that privilege until you hit the 100 subscriber mark. So for now, you just have this default URL. That's kind of a jumble of characters. Next up, you want to add a link so you can add links to, let's say, your website or your other social media platforms. And these, again, will appear in the About Us tab under your YouTube channel. The next item is links on banner. So links on banner means that when someone visits your YouTube channel, they'll see an array of icons in the bottom right corner of your channel art that will take them directly to other websites that you have set up here in YouTube studio. Now you've probably seen these little icons on someone's channel art. That is how they get there. And it, you can see that there are a Facebook icon or an Instagram icon. When you enter in a URL for Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, or even your own website, YouTube pulls the icon from those sites. So you don't have to do anything for people to know that this is the link to your Facebook page. This is the link to your Instagram account. It all comes instantly. And under this drop down here under links on banner, you can choose how many links will be shown on the banner up to five. I'm going to set it on first five links, even though I only have three here, it'll just pull those first three. But then if I ever add more in the future, those will automatically populate. And then again, here's a chance to add in an email address, which will appear on your about us page. Okay, now that we've done all of that, let's head over to the layout tab. And this portion of the channel customization is only relevant if you've already uploaded content. So again, if you haven't uploaded content yet, you're not sure how to do that. Make sure you check out that video I mentioned before. Again, it's in the description link. But if you have created content, let's work on this layout tab together. So the first option is to add a channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed. A channel trailer is a video that's really about you and what your channel is about. It's almost like a commercial for your channel. I would say channel trailers have a little bit fallen out of favor on YouTube. They're a little bit 
out of style. I find that most people use a video that they think is like kind of their signature style as their channel trailer. So it's real content that they've created for YouTube, not just a commercial for themselves, but the one that they think is like the hottest one, the one that's been the most successful and is the most representative of the type of content that they show on their channel. So under channel trailer for people who have not yet subscribed, I am going to add a video but it's going to be, let's say this one here. The next option is a featured video for returning subscribers. So this is maybe a different video or the same video that you want people to see when they are in fact subscribed to your channel. So these are people who already know you. So your featured video could be your most recent content. It could be a video that you think was awesome that didn't really perform as well as you had hoped. So that is the video that they will see when they visit your homepage as a subscriber. Next up is featured sections. So you automatically have a featured section on your homepage if you have created a YouTube short. A YouTube short is a 60 second or less vertical video that will automatically get added to this shorts section on your YouTube channel. So you don't have to worry too much about that. The next one is your uploads. So by default, YouTube will show all of your uploads on your homepage unless you ask it not to. But let's say you want to add a section, let's say of a playlist. If you have a bunch of videos that you've created that kind of fall into one category, you can create playlists on YouTube. And I will create a separate video about playlists because there's a lot to know about it. But if you do already have a playlist, you can add it here. So what you do is hit this plus sign to add a section and let's go to single playlist and let's select this playlist. Now let's say I wanted this playlist to show up above my shorts or above my uploads that are already there by default. I just grab these double bars and drag that playlist to the top and then hit the publish button. And now you can see here on our YouTube channel, that single playlist is at the top of our channel. The shorts are not even visible because we don't have any shorts. All right, let's go back to customize channel and finish setting up our channel. So we're back here in YouTube studio. Let's head down to this tab here for settings. And this is where you're gonna get kind of the more nuts and bolts setting on your channel, but it's important to look at these options and make selections for some of them. The first one is your default units. This is how once you do get monetized, um, and if you want to know more about monetization, I've got another video, of course I do, right up here, I'll link to it. And also down in the description, talking about how you get into the YouTube partnership program to get monetized. Um, but his, this is where you would set up the currency uh, that you want to be paid in eventually. Next up is channel. So here you can set up some basic info like your country of residence. And here is where you can add keywords about what your channel is about. I recommend putting in these keywords. It can help you get found in a search when people are searching for the type of content you create. Once you've entered in those keywords, let's head over to advanced settings. And here's a lot of options for you to choose from. The first one asks if you wanna set your channel as made for kids. So you only say yes to this question if you are specifically making video content that is for children, like you're reviewing toys or you're reading bedtime stories or something like that. Otherwise, the correct answer is no, my channel is not made for kids. So even if your content is safe for kids, just designate that it's not made for kids. Those are two very important distinctions that YouTube takes very seriously. Obviously. So we're going to select no here. Next up, you can add your Google AdSense account. So once you get monetized and you create a Google AdSense account so you can get paid by Google, this is where you would do that linking. We don't need to worry about that yet because our channel is brand new and we don't qualify for ads on our YouTube channel yet. The next one is about automatic captions. YouTube will create automatic captions for your content. And if you don't want to show potentially inappropriate words on those captions, you can just check this box. The next one is the subscriber count. You can actually hide how many people are subscribed to your channel on YouTube if you don't want people to know. But I have to tell you, the etiquette on YouTube is to show that subscriber count. Everyone starts at zero. There's no shame in having a low subscriber count. So I would leave that one checked, but it's up to you. The next one's about disabling interest-based ads. I would leave that unchecked. 
The next option is to allow viewers to clip your content, which is automatically checked. So allowing users to clip your content means that when people create shorts, they can sample parts of your content to create their shorts. There's kind of like a two sided coin on this one. It's great because your content could go viral if someone clips part of your content for their shorts. But on the other hand, if you're really protective of your content and you don't want people being able to borrow it, then you might want to uncheck this box. The next tab is for feature eligibility. You have to have a verified YouTube account to be eligible for a lot of features on the platform. If you don't know how to verify your YouTube account, you can find that information on that other video I made about posting your first YouTube video. All right, let's head down to upload defaults. Here you can default what the title of your videos will be every time you upload them. I would not recommend this at all. Every video you make should have a custom title. But this next one I would fill in. You can have some generic content always displayed in your descriptions on your videos. So for instance, for me, I have links to the camera I use, the microphone I use, uh, links to my other YouTube channel and my website. And I always want that content under every video I post. So that content is automatically entered every time I upload a new video. Now I can add more content to the description to optimize my video specific to what that video is about. But those basic items will always be in the description of my video without me having to set that up. It's a huge time saver. I would definitely recommend doing that. And then you can customize your visibility which I wouldn't recommend doing because sometimes I like to publish my videos instantly. Sometimes I like to schedule them by default. So I would just leave that alone. And then the last one is tags. If there's certain keywords you always want attached to your video content, you can add those tags here. Um, but as you upload your content, you do have the opportunity to type in custom tags as well. All right, let's head over to advanced settings. Here you can change your standard YouTube licensing for all your videos, your language, um, caption certification, and some features for comments. Now, again, every time you upload a video, you are able to customize those settings per video. But if you know you always want the settings to be the same, this is where you would do that. So they're defaulting to these settings. The next option is permissions. This is if you have like a brand account, like a company account, you want more than one person to be able to manage that channel using their Google login. This is where you would set that up. Under community, you can add moderators if you have a live channel chat if you're doing a live stream. This next option is for approved users. If you have your settings on your comments to be held for review, which means that you have to approve every single comment that gets posted under one of your videos before it's made public, you can actually make exemptions here under approved users. So if you have friends that you know, they always write nice comments under your videos and you just want them always to be shown publicly, you can identify them here. And then hidden users is people who maybe write nasty comments under your videos. There's actually an option to hide them from your YouTube channel. So they'll see their comments under your videos when they post them, but nobody else will. It's a great tool YouTube has created to kind of keep the trolls at bay. If you remove their comments, they, you might like exacerbate them a little bit. So hidden users is an awesome tool that comes in really handy on YouTube. The next option is live redirects. This allows other creators to send their viewers to any of your live streams or premieres. And then here you can have blocked words in your comments. So if someone uses like profanity, you can block those comments from being shown publicly um, or any other like name calling or bullying. This is where all of that is managed. And the last option is to block links and comments. So this kind of helps keep spammers at bay. So people cannot link to other websites or YouTube videos in the comments without you approving it. Under the defaults tab is more customization for managing comments on your channel. The next item down is creator demographics. This is where you can tell YouTube more about yourself if you want them to know more about your demographics as a creator. And here is agreements. This is where you can view all of the YouTube terms of service. Let's just hit the save button and let's take one last look at our blinged out beautiful YouTube channel. And there you go, guys. That is how you create a super professional YouTube channel step by step. Is there anything else you want to know about creating YouTube content? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you again.